GCSE maths was extremely difficult for me in year 11 and yet at the end of it I came out with a 9 in both GCSE maths and further maths. So I want to basically help everyone watching this video get the best possible grades that they can in maths just because it's just such a hard subject even though it's also one of the most important subjects that you take at GCSE. Let's get straight into the video. Now so many people don't use this like hack or technique and it's not even a technique but it's just so good it's so so good um and i really wish i found it sooner into my gcse maths journey but basically it's using corbett maths five a day i say this so many times i don't know how many youtube videos i have to put in for people to actually start using it tell me in the comments if you already use corbett maths five a day but basically you go on the website called corbett maps you find that five a day and it's just maths questions at different levels. So it can be low tier maths, like foundation tier maths, up all the way up to further maths and like grade nine maths. It has loads of different tiers. And basically it just gives you a set of five questions every single day, every single day up until GCSEs, every single day. And that will basically just train your brain to get used to maths. One of the most difficult things that people find about maths is that it's just not natural to them. It doesn't come naturally to them. It's a whole foreign thing. It's not words, it's numbers. And using those numbers in algebra, it's not common to them. But if you can make maths common to you by going over it again and again and again, every single day, so it just becomes a normal thing, it can become so much easier. And call maths, it's only five questions, so you won't feel like you're doing a lot. In the morning, wake up, do your morning routine, and then just what, maybe whilst you're walking to school or maybe whilst you're eating breakfast just have the sheet of paper that has the five questions do those five questions mark them and then boom you're done and if you do get one of those questions wrong the best thing to do after that is to go to your teacher ask them can i have some help on this question and then after the teacher helps you with that question maybe go home and go over that topic that the question was based on because those five questions are from different topics they're not all from the same topics so it's just a good way not only to identify weaknesses in your maths knowledge but also to be able to just get used to the process of doing maths and doing maths inside your brain which doesn't understand maths quite yet basically another thing is to make sure you don't waste time doing questions you already know how to do i know it feels quite tempting when you get into a question set and you just start going out those questions and you're like oh i'm doing pretty well on this i'm like making progress and i'm doing well i'm getting all these questions right if you're getting all the questions right then why are you still doing those questions you clearly understand the topic so move on you don't need to do those questions anymore because clearly you understand it there's so much stuff to cover in maths that you just don't have enough time to be doing so many questions on a topic that clearly is understood by you and so you could use that time better trying to understand a topic that is way more difficult in your mind at least and maybe you have identified that topic through once again called maths five a day now of course if you're getting into the topic you're doing and you're getting those questions right but you still feel that you won't do well on the exam obviously use your intuition get through the questions if you feel that it will benefit you in the end but if you're really getting through those questions thinking wow this is too easy move on just move on to a different topic because that is just wasting your time and we don't want to be wasting time because GCSEs are in less than 100 days. If you saw my 100 day GCSE video, which you should go watch, they're less than 100 days away. So we don't have time to be dilly dallying. Now this is going to be so obvious to you guys. Um, sorry, but like I'm just going to have to say for the people who don't know, no offense to the people who don't know, but I feel like most people know, past papers. I know you all know, or at least most of you know that past papers are so important for going over content, for just knowing exam technique, yada yada. But are you really doing past papers properly? Past papers are important, but they're not as effective as you're making them out to be if you're not doing them effectively. An effective way to do past papers is to make sure, first of all, you log the score you get on that past paper when you're done, after you're done marking it. Make sure you say how well you found it, what score you got, and when you did it. Those three things are the most important for you to get. For me, I put green, I found it pretty well. I put the score I got, maybe I got a seven on the paper. And then I put when I did it. Maybe I did it December 11th. 
I put those three things. And then when you do another past paper, you do the same thing again and again and again and put it into a big spreadsheet so that you can log and see how you are improving because that is the most important thing. You cannot be doing past papers and thinking I did well or I did bad and then just moving on with your day because that is not good. They're used for finding topics you're weak at and finding topics you're strong at, but then they also need to be used to see if you're improving. What should be happening is that you're doing the past papers and a lot of the time, maybe if you're not doing as well as a student, it's red, 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 yellow, like the scores are bad and over, but then over time, it goes red, red, yellow, yellow, orange, orange, green, green. I'm pretty sure that's the wrong order, but you get what I mean. You want to be improving so that by GCSE time, everything is green and you're getting 100% on everything. Obviously, you're not gonna be getting 100% on everything, but you know what I mean? You need to make sure that you're improving and you're not just doing past papers for the sake of doing past papers because they have an importance, but if you don't use them to their full effectiveness, they're not that important. Pause, if you're watching this right now, then please subscribe to Study L, me, because I'm trying to reach 3000 subscribers by the end of February and I'm going to be releasing so much more GCSE videos like this. Goodbye, continue with the video. I'll go ahead and give you some websites that are just really good to use for maths because we all need to know these websites. I've already mentioned Corbett Maths, but then there's Maths Watch, Maths Genie. There is TL Maths who explains maths so well. He literally saves my life by A-level. I'm doing A-level maths and further maths. He saves my life. Organic Chemistry Tutor, goes into a bit too much detail, so it's more A-level. But if you really want to understand something, watch Organic Chemist Organic Chemistry Tutors for those really hard topics. But that might be a bit too much because he does go into A-level content. I swear I had more websites. Um, if I do, I'll put them around me somewhere. Okay, last thing that I want to tell you. You need to stop being afraid of your teachers. We are 16, well, not me, but you guys are like 15, 16 and your GCSEs are coming up. You need to stop being afraid of your teachers and just ask them for help because you cannot be struggling on things for so long and then not be, not be improving on that struggle and then doing badly on it at, in your GCSEs because you're too afraid to ask your teacher for help. We can't be doing that, okay? We gotta ask the teachers for help. Just stop being afraid of them because they're there to help you. If they're being hostile, then I'm oh, sorry, you got bad teachers. But hopefully you don't have bad teachers. And you can always just go to a different teacher. There's gonna be so many maths teachers in your school, I guarantee, because obviously maths is the most popular subject. So if your teacher is just some unhelpful, terrible person, just go find another maths teacher. I'm sure they will be glad to help because that's what they're there for. So they literally can't tell you to go away. Why would they do that? Anyways, that's basically the end of the video. I hope any of those tips helped you. I hope they weren't too generic, but like obviously they included generic stuff like past papers, but you know, yeah. Make sure to like and subscribe because I'm trying to reach 3000 subscribers before the end of February. Enjoy the rest of your day.